The Chinese are one of America's oldest diaspora people groups from Asia. Today there are about, uh, what, something like uh, 85,000 Chinese in Boston metropolitan area. 69% increase since 1990. The first Chinese church was established in 1946, founded, uh, uh, and the founding pastor, Peter Shun. The uh, Chinese Evangelical Church was the second church established in 1961 by Reverend James Tang. Yeah. The Chinese Bible Church of Greater Boston was the third, founded by uh, Reverend Stephen Chu. Uh, <coughs> and uh, presently there are about 17 Chinese churches in metropolitan Boston, reaching about five to eight percent of the Chinese population. Uh, <coughs> Reverend Chang is a key missiologist in the Chinese community. He will now come and give us a brief report as what is occurring in the faith of the world's most populated country. Yeah. Thank you for this opportunity to uh, report to you, not the church in Boston area, rather it's in China. Uh, regarding to the Chinese church in greater Boston area, I think you can read from your report. Yes. Uh, Many of us may know that the uh, significant growth of Chinese churches inside of China in the past 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, we have uh, explosive growth in the past uh, five decades, even though the Chinese churches go through a 50 years persecution yeah. uh, by the communist government. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in 1949, just before China was uh, <coughs> under the control of communists, there are only about 700 Protestants and less than 3 million Catholics. Mm -hmm. But then, 50 years later, in the turn of, turn of the century, um, the estimation of a Christian in China is just like uh, my brother from Brazil said that it's very hard to estimate, not so precise like Japanese. <laughs> How many Christians in, in China? It's a good question. <laughs> as low as about 30 million wow. Protestants wow. only. Uh, up to people claim 100 million. So somewhere around 30 to 100 million Protestants <laughs> <laughs> in China. And uh, probably another 30 million Catholic. Uh, so no matter which number you, you, you choose, you can see that from less than one million Protestants grow to maybe 30, maybe 100 million. Mm -hmm. The percentage of growth is unbelievable. Yes. It's, uh, what's happening is, is we can only praise the Lord because the Holy Spirit brings up those things. Yes. There are nobody playing for it. Oh. But anyway, uh, that is what maybe you have heard. But uh, today I'm going to talk about something else regarding to another quiet revival in China. Because we know that in China there are two kinds of churches. One is a government control, so-called three-self church. And second kind of church is even larger than that, probably four or five times uh, larger than the government control church we call house church. Yeah. However, uh, since probably 1990, there are third kind of church evolved. The third kind of church is not a government control church. Also, it's not just like a house church in the rural area. Because the house church predominantly, 90-95% is in the rural area. Uh, the member of the church, most of them are semi-illiterate. Wow. You know, very, very few intellectuals in those house churches. However, after 1990, uh, the tremendous growth among the intellectuals. The first event is regarding to 1989 Tiananmen Square Massacre. Yeah. And after that, uh, many of the intellectuals overseas and also in, inside the China turned to Christianity. Wow. Amazingly. Because they are disillusioned about communism and everything. Yeah. So especially in North America, you can see every Sunday hundreds of those men in China intellectuals go to the church, Wonderful. looking for the purpose of life, yes. looking for something else. Yes. And, uh, but years later, now in every campus 
of each university or college, there are maybe 10 or several hundred of small Bible study groups yes. appear in every campus. Yes. And who is the leader? Very hard to estimate, but I believe, and most people believe that, most of the leader are those students study overseas, especially in North America, yes. become a Christian, go back to yes. become a faculty. Yes. And they lead the Bible study group. So there is tightly controlled and, and monitored by the government because communist government is afraid of those kind of revolution again, <laughs> just like 18, 1989. Yeah. But they are on the ground, but very powerful and very dynamic. <laughs> and many of them is a result of the diaspora ministry here yes, yes. in the United States, in Germany, in Japan, in Australia, in everywhere. Because 90% or 95% of them, before they go to abroad, they are atheists. They don't believe anything. Yeah. But amazingly, within few years, they become a Christian. And they are enthusiastic about Christianity and evangelism. So they go back home. They're not just working. They become a church leader. Yeah. So how many of those kind of intellectuals become Christian? Nobody knows. Only God knows that. But it's one thing that I would share with you that is that the diaspora ministry here is not end here. Amen. That is the it's channel and medium so that the gospel message will bring back home. In China, uh, even in the past, the house church leaders have a hard time to, um, to share the gospel with the intellectuals. And now, God doing that differently. So the third kind of church is gradually evolved inside China. Praise the Lord.